So I first discovered Søren Kierkegaard when I was working in a bookshop and I was working my way through a list of uh, world's great classics and I was using my author discount, my employee discount, to read these authors. And I discovered this guy, this Danish philosopher who died in 1855 and he was writing about reintroducing Christianity into Christendom. And I was reading this guy and I thought, wow, he is speaking to the culture that I grew up in today. He's speaking to evangelical cultural Christianity in North America. And I grew up in Bible Belt, Canada, and I was also an observer of, of the United States and that culture there. And I thought, Soren Kierkegaard is describing a culture that, in some ways, Christendom is more applicable to North American Christianity than it is even to the European Denmark of his age. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians think that Christendom means official state church, a government state church relationship. But for Kierkegaard, he said, no, Christendom is more of a mindset. It's more of a, a posture. It's part of your imagination. It's where Christianity has become part of the backdrop of your society. It's become so commonplace that you just take it for granted. Are you a Christian? Oh, my skin is white and I speak English, so yeah, I'm a Christian. Or I'm a patriotic American, so of course I'm a Christian. That kind of thing. And so for Kierkegaard, Christendom didn't mean some legal relationship between state and church. It meant the habitual assumption that you could be born into a Christian culture and that that is what made you a Christian. And for Kierkegaard, again and again, he says, that is precisely what has destroyed Christianity. The assumption that you can be born into it, that you can inherit it, that it's something to do with your ethnicity or your language or your patriotism or your citizenship or even what church you belong to. He said that has done away with Christianity. And what I want to do is awaken and shock and even offend people who think they are Christians who are living in Christendom into a relationship with true Christianity. And it's because of this program that Soren Kierkegaard enacted that we eventually even have such phrases now in our English language like uh, the leap of faith. Kierkegaard invented the leap of faith. Now he didn't think that that was necessarily the best way to go about things, but because we have Kierkegaard thinking about faith being a relationship that is separate from just habitual assent to common civic cultural morality, we have this idea that perhaps faith might mean a leap away from what everybody assumes as a matter of common sense. We also have from Kierkegaard and his program of reintroducing Christianity into Christendom, the language of authenticity. So if you've ever thought that it's good to walk the talk or practice what you preach, if you value that, then you are actually a Kierkegaardian, whether you knew it or not. He's given us a language for how do you speak about being an authentic member of your society without just blindly going along with the herd and that we value the idea that being a Christian might involve sometimes, often, stepping out from the crowd rather than being a part of the crowd. And so it's from Kierkegaard that we get these ideas. He also introduced to us the concept of anxiety or angst, uh, the idea that human beings, said Soren Kierkegaard, are, their glory is that they feel anxious. Now, how could that be? Because he said, Animals don't feel anxious. They just do what they do instinctively. The human stands on a precipice and knows they can make a decision. There's God standing in front of you saying, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. And we now have a choice. What are we going to do? Are we going to step towards this God or are we going to step away fearfully? And it's at that point, says Soren, that that is where you have anxiety because you are sure that if you take that step towards God, you're going to lose large parts of what you think are core elements of your identity. You're going to be asked to step away from your family, your church, your nation, your group, your institution, and you're going to be asked to step towards this person. In fact, he's a normal person. He's a normal person who has a bit of fish in his beard, who says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. And in that moment, you have to make this choice. And there's a bit of anxiety in that. And so Soren says, that's a good thing. Sin is not anxiety. Sin is choosing to be offended by Jesus. 
So it's because of Kierkegaard that we just have a lot of tools, I think, in the modern age for learning to live like authentic human beings in a culture that so values being part of a mob, being part of a crowd, being a good citizen or a good patriot or a good member of your church. Kierkegaard comes along and he throws a brick into all of that. And he suggests that maybe being a Christian might make you a less reliable citizen. Maybe being a follower of Christ will make you a less obviously commonsensical member of your society. Maybe it will mean that you're going to be taking steps towards something which unsettles and upsets the people around you. But, says Soren, because the incarnation is the most important event in the history of events happening, because this is God who says, this is what it looks like to be human. When you step away from those other less authentic parts of your identity and you're stepping towards the incarnation, you start to find something that is truly human and truly authentic. So often in the uh, school of interpretation of Kierkegaard, he's often thought of as being very gloomy, very anti-human, very anti-society, um, always angry all the time. Uh, but in fact, what he's doing is he's saying, no, those forms of society that we have built around us claim to be giving us authentic identity. We're told, if you just join this, this nation is the thing in which you must live and die. Or this church is a way in which you live and move and have your being. Or your family gives you everything you need. And Soren looks at those things and he says, that's an idolatry. It's God in which we live and move and have our being. And if any of these other little groups claim to be offering us authentic identity, then they are in fact claiming something that only God can provide. So for Soren to, to insult little groups doesn't mean he's anti-human. He's insulting them because he thinks they're stopping you from reaching what is truly where your home belongs. So I learned from Kierkegaard and I recommend him to you. I recommend that when you read Kierkegaard, you stand there and you take the hit. You let him hurt you because he's doing it because he loves you and he's trying to wake you up. Mm -hmm.